Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Piel. Thank you very, very much for all those that have been sharing the podcast and supporting, liking, subscribing. Um, yeah, Every time you share it, you just never know who this information will be helping out. So I uh, really, really appreciate it. So before we get started, I just wanted to give a huge acknowledgement to one of the bros that's just been helping me out with my podcast artwork. His name is Stacy Tapsell, and he's a very talented creator. Um, in the creative space, he's yeah, he's just a man with Photoshop, videos, audio, anything that you need done. I highly recommend that you hit this guy up. He's doing a lot of work with some a lot of big names out there. Uh, but yeah, most definitely, if you need any content creation of any kind, advertising this guy is the man so um yeah his link will be in the description i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation that we had today with my next guest uh he's a man who just speaks from his heart and it's a true testament to the journey he's been on and a lot of the challenges that he's had to overcome in his life so please welcome my guest willie bishop Brother, how you been? Yeah, uh, awesome. Mihia uh, tukia kwe, brother. Nice to see you. Um, this is awesome. Thank you for uh, for having me. Man, thank you for you know taking time, which is you know a non non renewable resource to to us all. So um, yeah, take some precious time out of your day to yeah give your gems of knowledge and wisdom to to our listeners so um and to myself who mm. you know i'll be sitting here learning as well and taking notes mental notes as well so awesome, brother. yeah thank you brother and for allowing you know myself and the listeners and any everyone watching um into into your beautiful home so um yeah, yeah thanks a lot brother okay the point brother anytime anytime so i guess um yeah introduce yourself to our listeners um yeah who are you and what do you do and what are you what are you passionate about my brother yeah kia ora te whanau uh ko Uli bishop toku ingoa uh my name's Uli bishop uh originally from from Aotearoa New Zealand a small little country town called Tokoroa um there's seven of us in our family so I come from a pretty big family um I'm the third youngest uh went to school in in, in Tokoroa mum and dad were there and then I moved to Auckland uh, after I'd finished seventh form and then studied up in Auckland. Um, sport, rugby league, rugby was a, obviously a big fan. And then I had the opportunity to come over here and play professional uh, in 2002. So I got a, um, got a two-year full-time contract with the Sydney Roosters. Um, spent two awesome years there. I uh, learned so much from the club and from the people around me. And then also had a uh, a two year stint here on the northern beaches with the Manly Sea Eagles. Again, that was amazing too, being around that professional environment, which mm. is something that I always wanted from a, a very young age. And then the last three years of my career, I played with the uh, the Wallabies on a rugby seven circuit. So that was awesome. That was awesome. Got to got to see some amazing places. Got to travel the world. Um, so yeah, very grateful for the run that I had. And now a uh, now a, a happily uh, married husband, father uh, to to two beautiful boys and uh, and, uh, and a little girl. So, living the dream, bro. Amazing. Living the dream. That's awesome, man. Awesome to hear. Uh, and yeah, like we were just discussing before, um, man. I'd love to touch on your you know Maori heritage and um, I mean of a man of native tongue who. You know, every single time I I approach you, and you're you know always speaking it, so it must be have a, a massive influence in your life. And I just wanted you to be able to touch in on on the importance of your your cultural heritage in your life. Yeah, um, obviously a very proud Maori man, uh, as you know. And every opportunity that I get to, you know, kōrero kiro te te reo Maori speak in Maori, I do. Mm. Um, uh, growing up uh, in Aotearoa, I was always bilingual, so I went to Kohanga. Um, spoke Māori all the way through my high school years, and then sort of when I when I had finished school, I sort of I sort of uh, didn't really follow through with it all. Um, obviously, into kapahaka and that performing arts, and that was always was always big for me. And then once I had found the passion for sport, I sort of noticed myself drifting away from the culture, or not away from the culture, just speaking it and being involved with it a lot more. And then being over here since two thousand two. It was only it was only two years ago that I sort of really noticed a massive shift in me. Uh, me and my family, me and my family went home, 
back to New Zealand and, and every year we have like a whānau wānanga like we get all of our families together Christmas Beautiful. and blah 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 and I got up and I, I spoke on behalf of my wife and my tamariki my kids and halfway through my, my speech I had to, I had to stop because I, I didn't know what to say anymore in the real in, 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 in our language and I was embarrassed I was embarrassed and that, that moment there made me realise that I, I really needed to reconnect with the culture because I had lost it. And then from that moment till now, I'm just really, really conscious about reconnecting with it again. So, you know, I speak it in our whare, in our home, uh, to my to my whānau, to my kids, to my wife, uh, and even friends around me now that are, that are proud, uh, you know, Māori, Māori men. Um, um, I want to influence them too. So if they, yeah. if they can hear... You know, uh, matua as they call me, the old fella. <laughs> if they can hear, you know, uh, aho, you know, kōrero ki roti te reo Māori speak in our Māori language, then hopefully it sort of influences them mm. to, to start speaking again. Yeah. So, yeah, but very, very proud of my culture. Uh, understand it um, all the way back to to when Aotearoa, when New Zealand got, like, to colonisation. Um, so my knowledge on that is, 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 uh, is, is pretty... Sp- Precious, so I understand it a lot more, um, and that's why I choose to uh, to speak it as much as I can. That's beautiful, um, and just try and try and push our, our culture uh, to as many people as possible. Because I know that if if we stop as a culture, if we stop speaking it, then it it we may lose it. And yeah. you know that's that's my identity is is, is being a proud Maori man. So I love my culture, I love my deal, I love my language, um, and I'm just reconnecting again as much as I can. Yeah, thanks, man. And you've actually inspired me to, yeah, look into my own roots. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to speak Samoan very well, but um, even looking into my own family heritage, my own family tree, where we've come from, um, where we, yeah, where my family have migrated from, like mm. all from meeting you twice. Uh, yeah, I guess yeah. Thank you very much for you know your influence that you that you've been you know wanting for your brothers um yeah man well what's happening to me so uh, awesome and 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 i was a little bit fakama, which is yeah. shy um uh because i don't i didn't want to come across as, as as being that kind of person but i was just um really proud of, of 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 my culture like i was saying and no disrespect to any other culture um but every opportunity and i guess it's a skill that i've learned along the way because i don't want to be disrespectful to anyone but when i speak it i try and translate it so it so everyone yeah. understands exactly what i'm yeah. saying um i love it bro Very yeah proud. Oh, Very awesome proud. man thanks for that um man oh let's talk about that that name on your shirt mm. brothers for brothers mm. man take me back to the reason why you started it and yeah yeah i mean how did it come about yeah bro well um so uh me and the wife bro me and the wife have been together 17 years we uh we've been married 15 years um but out of those uh but uh out of the two there were two years that we were separated and um the reason why we separated was because i i was unfaithful to my wife and um, and I held this to myself for a very long time. Um, and I every opportunity that I get to share my story, I choose not to hold anything back because I know that there's power behind what I say. So I was unfaithful uh, to my wife for two years. And then it got to a point where I no longer wanted to be here. I didn't want to be on this earth. I was living two separate lives, obviously married with two boys and... And, and, and having an affair and seeing this other person at the same time. And then after a while, I was really starting to, it was really starting to affect my, my mental health. I was very suicidal. Um, I thought that the best way for me to, to, to get rid of this pain was to no longer be here. Uh, and I, had that, I held that to myself for two years, two mm. years. And then on top of this, um, this person that I was seeing um, fell pregnant. So now I have another daughter to another another lady. Uh, and so I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to get out of it. And I just thought by ending my life would have been the easiest way because I didn't have to deal with anything. Didn't tell a soul, bro. Didn't tell a soul. Kept this to myself. It was just eating at me. Just eating at me. And then um, one day I just built up the courage to finally be honest and come clean about everything that I had done. 
But while I was building up the courage, I was getting ready to leave my family because I knew as mm-hmm. soon as I come clean, I had lost my wife, I had lost my kids. So one day I just built up the courage and I said to my wife, I said, look, I need something, I need to tell you something and it's obviously um, you, you're not going to like what I, what I have to say to you. Um, and then I just come clean. I let everything out on the table, told her that I was unfaithful, that I had a, another daughter to someone else. Uh, and just that weight had shifted from me, bro. Uh, immediately this weight had just shifted. Um, and I was like, I'm ready to leave now. Mm. I'm good. I'd, I'd done what I had to do. And I'm ready to lose my family. Um, and obviously all I had done was shift the weight from me to the wife because now she's down on all fours yeah. and she's broken. Like, brother, I ultimate, ultimate betrayal. Ultimate betrayal. Put her through the ringer, bro, and she still stood here. Still stood here. And then obviously after she she had come to her senses and realised what had gone what it, what it, I had said to her. She got up off the ground, bro. She looked at me in the eyes and she said, thank you for telling me the truth. Now what do we do to fix our marriage? I was like, what? Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. You know, I was expecting her to say, all right, we're done. And then from that moment forward, um, she's she's been the rock behind everything, trying to fix things and change habits that I used to have and it was too hard for me bro I didn't want to do that so I decided to leave I said no it's not working Mm. the marriage was poison Um, so I decided to leave she wanted to hold on and try and fix it I was like no grass is greener so I left I said I'm done here so I left living the life for two years bro partying drinking living like a single man and then through those two years that we were separated that's when I really struggled mentally. Um, anxiety, next level. Depression, next level. Suicidal thoughts every day. And I just locked up. I chose not to not to speak to anyone because I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed about the situation that I had put my family in, had lost my family through selfish decisions, through the kind of person that I used to be. Very stubborn, very staunch, very selfish, very egotistic. Um, I wasn't a nice person, bro. I wasn't a nice person. Um, and through those two years, the most, the most, um, the two times that I was most vulnerable, bro, were the first five minutes in the morning when I used to wake up. First thing in the morning, I used to wake up in the dark by myself, sitting on the edge of the bed, just in tears, bro. Just thinking to myself, man, you effed up. What have you done? Um, behind closed doors, I was broken. But, you know, out in society, around friends and work and yeah. blah, 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 you know, I perceived Mask. to have this, 100%, mm. perceived to have this amazing life, but really I was torn, but I didn't want anyone to know. And then again, it was the last five minutes before I went to sleep, you know, quiet, no lights, by myself, just in tears. Um, and that, that happened for, for two years. And then one morning, the, the penny dropped for me, bro. It just dropped for me. I woke up and I was thinking to myself, man, I need to make a shift because I'm not liking the person that I've turned into. And from that moment, I just made a decision. Till now, I've just been growing. I've been getting better. I've learned a lot about myself along the way. I've educated myself now, so I'm more equipped when life throws me challenges. Um, but I, I, I can't, I can't miss this. I. Obviously, playing uh, representative touch footy was something that I was good at. And, and, and sports, I always had an identity through sport. You know, it was always mm. really this rugby, rugby sevens, league, touch, whatever. So I was only ever known for that. Um, and so I was away uh, one campaign. I was playing Aussie touch at the time. And I connected with this guy. And it was someone that I wouldn't normally hang around. I was like, oh, you dress funny, you look funny, blah, blah, blah. And that was me as a person, just judged hard. And then um, he was in conversations with other friends of that, and I just felt myself, I was listening to his conversations, and I was like, man, this guy, what he's saying, I can, it relates to me. And then just like that, I just started gravitating towards him because I felt comfortable with him, and he was educating me without him even knowing. Yeah. And then it got to a point where I just felt so comfortable with him that I was like, man I, I want to share my story with you and so come all out like I'm doing with us mm. now and brother he just educated me so much 
Um, he taught me about accountability. He taught me about vulnerability. Uh, he taught me about all things men's mental health. Um, but most importantly, like he sort of really made me um, realize what kind of person I had turned into. And so he mentored me over the last two or three years. And then he's educated me so much now that I no longer need him. Um, but if there are moments where I'm a little bit stuck or a little yep. bit rattled, like he's always there. Mm. Um, and so I, I send my love to him and he knows how I feel about him. Very humble man, doesn't take credit for anything. Just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Yeah. But a lot of my credit goes to him for, uh, for, for saving me and educating me because now uh, I'm the person I am today. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, and when it comes to Brothers for Brothers, because I had experienced anxiety, depression, yeah, um, and then obviously through my marriage separation, I don't know how it happened, bro, but me and the wife were fortunate enough to have reconciled our marriage, and um, I, uh, I guess it was the, the 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 big man upstairs saying, "Look, at this is your this is your second chance at at saving your family." And then so, um, with the education that I had had, I know my wife was was healing from a different a different end of the the scale. We both decided just to put all this 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 nastiness aside and try and put the kids first for once. And then we connected. You know, would you like to come over for dinner? And then one day become two days, two days become a week, blah blah blah, and we really started to fall in love again. And I know that it may sound a bit strange, but we, we truly did. Um, decided to put all the, uh, the nastiness aside. And then I started, I could see that the separation took a, took a toll on my two boys. Um, and then mm-hmm. once me and the wife had sort of, you know, started hanging out again and that, I noticed that the shift in them, like mum and dad are talking and blah, blah, blah. And then so I was staying, I was staying over home in our family home here. Obviously, the wife and the kids were here, and I was I was away. And then I remember waking up one morning, and then I was in tears, and because I'm a very um, affectionate person. Um, for the first time in two years, the wife put her arms around me, and bro, I was in tears. Eh? So it broke me because I'd I'd missed that, I'd missed that, and she noticed that that something was up. And I just said to her, I said, um, you know, things over the last couple of months have been amazing. I love reconnecting with you and our boys. Uh, it feels like happy family again. Yeah. And then yeah. I just said to her, what are the chances of us trying to bring and our yeah. marriage, give it another go? And all she said was, oh, I've been waiting. No, I haven't done anything. I've just been waiting for you to change. Um, and so in that moment, I realized how powerful my wife was, you know, because I put her through yeah. the ring and bro. I always knew she was the rock of our family. But at that moment, made me realise uh, I'm very, I'm very lucky here. And uh, to this day, we're just growing. We're just growing. I, uh, uh, I love and res- respect my wife dearly. Um, I'm glad that my 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 boys see mum and dad back together again. And we've been reconciled for three years now. And uh, I truly believe that uh, the big man has, has blessed me and my wife with with our, our little daughter so Kamai is almost two years now so um, she's been a, she's been a, a, a blessing for us um, and now where we're at in terms of our journey is that as a family we have connection now with my other daughter oh, and wow. so we're heading down yeah. that, that that down that journey now so ultimately my ultimate goal is for us for me and my family and my my other daughter to be sitting at a table uh, mm. As a whanau, as a family, um, and that's something that we're working towards. But uh, at the moment, we we, we have uh, we are in regular contact with my my other daughter. Um, the boys know that they have a, a half sister, mm. and so we're that's where we're at in our journey. Amazing, amazing! It's man, a true testament to your wife and it, her unconditional love for you through the struggles, um, you know, leading up to this point. Uh, mm. I guess. Bro, if you could talk to yourself, that person that you were five years ago, what would you what would you say? 
um, what would I say? I say this, and this, 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 this answer may be this. This answer may be a little bit off track, um, but I say this every time I get to share my testimony: is that as 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 strange as this may sound, um, I'm obviously not proud of the person that I used to be, but I'm actually grateful in a way. I'm grateful that my journey sort of took me that mm. way mm. because yes. it's led me to the person that I am yeah. now. So a little bit of me used to regret the way that I was, but now it's more like I needed to head down that direction for me to grow. Yes. Um, it was just uh, unfortunate that I made bad decisions. Um, but like I was saying, I, I am grateful for um, for where my journey had taken me back then because it's led me to happiness now. Yeah. Uh, if that if that yeah. sort of makes no, sense. That's beautiful because, like, you know, hindsight's a beautiful thing, but when you're in it, when you're in, you, like, if you're a Willie, you know, five years ago, mm. it's it's not a it's not a nice place to be. But the fact that you've, from what I'm hearing, you know, you suppressed a lot of those emotions, you know, and then it took you two years to move through those emotions. Because generally speaking, I feel a lot of men we suppress a lot. Mm. You know, we suppress anger, sadness. We put the mask on. Yeah. You have to be that strong man. Yeah, but it's only actually when we move through those emotions, feel the anger, feel the sadness, mm. express it in a healthy way, not through vices. Mm. That's when we can actually heal. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, absolutely, bro. I agree with you one hundred percent. And and I thought it was just cultural. Mm. Um, I thought you know we obviously instilled into us to never, you know, to to never share your feelings, never to show emotion, to never show weakness. I thought that was just in our Polynesian culture. Mm. Um, yeah. But it's for all men. Yeah, it's for all men. all men. And one thing that I truly believe, bro, and I could be wrong, I'm just, I will only ever talk from my own experiences, is that the, the reason why, the reason why I never, I never shared how I was feeling or never spoke up to anyone about it was because I didn't know how. I just didn't know how because I was taught to, to be quiet. I was mm. just taught to shut up. And that's one of the things that I'd learned that, that it's 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 a good thing to be able to share your feelings. Um, I didn't I just didn't know I was just uneducated in that sense. But now I understand it. Now that I've that I've been through it, and that I was fortunate enough to find a, a, a place of happiness. Now, that's where the passion f- where for brothers for brothers comes from, is because I had gone through it and I've come out the other end. Yes. And now I want to share. I want to help. Beautiful. And that's what um. That's what our group is is all about, um, and brothers for brothers started with a, a, another really good friend of mine. Um, he was going through a divorce at the time, and he just said to me, "He goes, bro, I feel like we need to share our story somehow." And I was like, "Okay, I'm, I'm open to whatever you want to talk about." And he goes, "Why don't we just start a men's walk here on the beaches? Um, I'll reach out to a couple of friends. You reach out to a couple of friends. Whoever rocks up, we'll just go for a walk." And I was like, what's your intention behind it? And I said, and he said to me, he said, the intention behind getting our men together is just to create a safe and comfortable space where brothers can just talk. Um, and I was like, man, that's powerful, bro. Never thought about it. I was like, that's powerful. So obviously behind it, so I reached out to a few friends. He reached out to a few friends. And there's some amazing spots here on the beaches. Very lucky here. And so we started with like three or four of our friends. They were a little bit confused to, to, to know what it was all about. And then we just went for a walk and just started talking. Um, and then the snowball effect happened. You know, a couple mm. more would rock up and then a couple more would rock up. And then when I got to uh, when I got to a place where we sort of had, like, uh, a good number, then I sort of explained to the boys what we are all about here. You know, the reason why we're getting together every Wednesday is just to create that environment or that family feel where you can speak about what you're going through, I can share what I've been through, blah, blah, blah. And then it took a little while. It took a little while for the boys to really open up because you need to obviously build that rapport with someone. And then the growth from when we first started to now has just been amazing, bro. You know, boys, like, fully masks off and talking from the narco, talking from the heart. And I was like, man, we're here. Like, we've created this environment. We need to tap into more men somewhere somehow and so we started with a, a weekly walk before covid um had some awesome momentum 
um, connecting with a lot of our brothers. And then uh, this year, obviously, with COVID, and that was a little bit crazy. And um, like I was saying to you, just off 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 the mic, I wasn't tech savvy at all. So uh, I took our boys to Zoom. I took our boys to Zoom, so we kept running a, a weekly Zoom chat. And to be honest, bro, Zoom's been a blessing in disguise for us because mm-hmm. it's given us the opportunity to reach out to other men. Like we've got a couple of boys international, got a couple of boys interstate now. And so it's been amazing, bro. It's been amazing. So every Wednesday, every Wednesday we have our Zoom chats. Uh, which caters for everyone, all the the brothers interstate and overseas. But then every second weekend we have our our walk and talk. So we've got a combination of both now, which is um which is beautiful, bro. And you can find all those announcements on your Instagram and yep. social media pages, which yep. will all the dis- links in the description of this podcast. So yeah, yeah, I'll throw it all up there so yep. people can find out how to get involved. So and that's and that's one thing I'm also still learning is the social stuff. <laughs> Not the not the sharpest, the but journey, yeah. man. It's a journey. Yeah, yeah, bro. And that, like I was saying to you, willing to learn, you know, and and yeah. that tech space. But it's been a beautiful thing, man. The the, the the journey's been great. It's been overwhelming. Like it's been like a, a an overwhelming feeling because I didn't. This is something that I never asked to do. I never seen myself in the space. Mm. Um, but I just my journey has landed me here. Uh, I truly believe I've found my calling, and and that's that's what I'm doing. Uh, I'm just trying to inspire through through sharing my story and that's why when you reached out I was like man I would love to uh, love to raise a little more awareness in this space yeah 100% and yeah if, if anyone can get to a Brothers for Brothers walk or catch up or you know weekly phone call man that'd be amazing what are some of the um, uh, topics that you guys discuss I know during the week, this last week, you, you spoke about you know, anger and frustration and, and how a lot of men, you know, how did they deal with that? What were some of the common themes that you guys discussed, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, so again, uh, um, I, I wanted to share uh, things from my own journey. Mm. Um, and mm-hmm. like I was saying to you before, I'll never spit um, from yeah. someone else's chat. I'll only ever talk from what I've experienced. And things like vulnerability, you know, being having the courage to be able to to cry yeah. and to show emotion was something that I never did but now I understand the power behind it mm. so vulnerability is obviously going to be a topic that we speak about uh, being accountable you know I would blatantly do something wrong but it was never my fault no not my fault having the ability to know what accountability is and owning owning your mistake is big and um, so we tapped into all, all topics men's mental health um, you know having the ability to show empathy to someone uh, we tapped into anger and frustration where does that come from for you you know is it set in high expectations um, again I I, I I speak from what I've learned and the tools that I have um, and that's the great thing about what we what what we have in our group is that not only am I sharing my pain with you and you sharing your pain with me we're actually educating each other with the tools that we need to sort of fix what we're going through yeah. Which is which is which is big, bro. Which is big. Education is big for for everyone, mm. um, and especially in this in, in this men's mental health space. I feel, and we speak about it all the time, having life tools. And obviously, the more equipped you are, the the, the more uh, prepared you are when life throws you yeah. challenges. So we sort of just tap into things like that, you know, self love. Never knew what self love was. Um, I probably did, but I I never really went out of my way to. You know, to, to tap into something that that made me happy. Yeah. Um, just just the things like that that are that I feel like are important to know. Yeah. I, I guess while we're on the topic, you want to tap into some of the actual practical things you do, and like let's just say for self love, like how do how do you actually how does Willie practice self love? Yeah. So self love for me is 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 uh, is straightforward to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to think uh, playing sport was a type of self-love for me but it really wasn't it was me just stroking my ego because I knew that I was knowing through sport I loved it I knew that I was good at it but I only done it to please others even though even though I I, I still loved it myself I knew it was like you know people know me for this I need to get out there so that was me feeding ego big time and know that now that I understand what ego is everything that I choose to do now as as the new me 
is from a place of love and not ego. So yes. that that's the massive difference from the person I used to be till now. But self love for me is very simple. I I am a big fan of meditation and I'm a big fan of yoga. So and that's something that I've discovered through my journey. So uh, not only is the yoga uh, good for my physical well being. Uh, the meditation side of it, it also is good for my healing or mm. my my mind. So healthy body, healthy mind is very important to me. So that's 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 my type of self love. I also journal a lot. Oh, uh, nice. So yeah, I tap into to journaling a, j- journaling a lot um, in terms of gratitude and, and small things like that. And that's just my daily routine. So I've created those habits where um, uh, we've spoken about it before and. There has been a lot of people that sort of reach out to me for advice and mm-hmm. help, and uh, I noticed that I've sort of stepped into that mentoring role, not asking to be there, but just the way things have worked yeah. out. And I really know how important it is to make sure that my cup is full first before before I help others, because you can't pour from an empty cup, if that sort of makes yeah. sense. I make sure that I have love for myself first for me to be able to give love to others. And I, I do it that way. I'm very happy with with the routine that I have and I love my yoga and I love my meditation and that just fills me up. Yeah. Um, so I'm good that way. Yeah, and it's so important in this day and age where everything's so fast-paced and, you know, you've got to be here, you've got to be there, you've got to be in two places at mm. once and just life is so busy mm. that you forget to look after yourself you forget to physically mentally spiritually emotionally yeah in all on all aspects and i think um yeah movements like brothers for brothers or other movements out there just allows you to one remember that focus on that and yeah i guess once you're putting yourself first then everything else comes after that it's mm. like everything naturally just is yeah. born from that but um man and that's that's something that i didn't know you yeah, know, oh. I was just like give, 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 yeah. give, give, try and make this person happy, this person happy, but yet my household was mm. was rocky, mm-hmm. you know, and so that I'm grateful for the lesson, yeah. um, and and like you're saying, um, you need to love self first before you can sort of love others. Yeah, yeah. Talking about the house and kids, and I wanted to tap into um, my fatherhood for you, um, mm. for yourself, your own experience, and. Um, how important it is and, and the lessons that it's probably it's, it's taught you in your yeah. journey um, if you wanted to talk into that yeah sure this 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 one I'll probably go um, I'll probably go cultural a little yeah and 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 no no offense to anyone else um, I, I grew up in a very in a very violent home uh, mm. drugs alcohol physical abuse verbal abuse all that kind of stuff Um so when I was when I was growing up, uh, Dad only ever spoke with his fists, you know, and that's that's what we saw. So we think it's yeah. normal. Um, and, and so when I got to an age where I realised that what he was doing was wrong, I made a promise to myself, and I said to I said to myself that I was never going to be the person that he was. I turned into that exact same person, bro. Turned into that that exact same person. Very very violent very physical, um, like verbal abuse to partners, uh, to my wife, to my kids. Um, and then once I had realised that what I was doing was wrong, I then made a conscious decision to to try and break the cycle that I feel like was in, in our family. Um, whenever I used to make mistakes or get in trouble, the wife you know, would be at me for this. Um, I always used to blame my dad because uh, it's your fault that I'd made this mistake because I seen you do it. I thought it was okay, but now I'm in trouble, blah, blah, blah. It's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Um, And I was like that for a very long time, very bitter. Um, But then I realised that once I I, I had educated myself, obviously, with with a different mindset and and that come over time, I no longer look at him and blame him for the mistakes that I had made. I look at him now and I actually thank him for being the way that he was because now I know not to be that way. Um, But I didn't know any better then. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Um, And that's something that I take very seriously now is when I choose to discipline my kids, I discipline through communication. I don't discipline through this. I don't drink. I don't smoke. Um, uh, The way that I speak, to my wife uh, is with love and respect not through the fist 
um, all these things that that were passed down through through my parents, I choose to be that person in my generation to break it now. Because if I yeah. if I don't break the cycle that was handed to me, it's only going to filter to my two boys, and they're going to mm-hmm. continue. So that's um, something that I used to be very conscious about. But because I've been tapping into it for a long time now, I subconsciously just do things now. It's like I, I know how to handle myself. I know how to speak. I blah, blah, blah. Um, so those cultural changes were uh, uh, very important to me. Yeah. But then in saying that, I understand that my dad was only taught that way exactly from my right. grandfather. Yeah, He was only using the tools that he had. Hanji. He, he never had the awareness that it was wrong. He just that's just the way things are. That's right. And that's right. And that's that's why I'm a big I'm a big fan of, 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 of the saying monkey see, monkey do because if I if I if I do bad things I, I, I speak a certain way, I act a certain way, then the boys and my daughter are gonna follow. And if they yeah. turn out like me, it's not their fault. It's because I wasn't better as a as a father, as a leader. Yes. Um so now understanding that I guess my answer to your question, bro, is I love I love my my my, my father role. Um, if you asked me five years ago, who Willie Bishop was, I would say you know I'm I'm this footy player. I'm this. I've done this. I've yep. done that, because that was my identity. Take that away from me, I wouldn't have been able to answer that question five years ago. Mm. Answer to your question, I'm a very proud husband, a proud father, um, very loving, very caring, very selfless. Now. Um, and just and just, I know that I'm a great leader for 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 my family. Um, so I now know who I am as a person outside of the identity that I used to live in. Yeah. Um, I love it, bro. That's amazing. And I love now, it, bro. now you you've experienced the beauty, and you know, taking that taking ownership of what's happened to you instead of mm. acting as you know a victim mm. and, and applying it in your own life, and now trying to spread that to other men so they can experience that beauty that's just amazing man just um it's a very selfless way and i just i resonated with you 100 percent in terms of your upbringing and you know being in a having a father that wasn't the best but you know being able to forgive because that was all he knew mm. um yeah resonated that with that 100 percent, man so good bro. so um that's huge, yeah. and I, I think a lot of our males, uh, a lot, a lot of our brothers have a very yeah. similar upbringing. Yeah. Um, you know, and I just feel like uh, one thing that I'm that I'm big in is that other men don't need to experience failure mm. to learn. You know, some people say, "Look, sometimes you need to hit rock bottom for you to wake up." No, I don't agree. Mm. I don't agree. You know, all it all it needs is education and a little awareness. Brother, you don't need to fail for you to learn. Let me educate you, bro. I've already hit rock bottom. Learn from me, and then you're good. Your life can be good. You don't need to fail, man. Yeah. Uh, I believe. Yeah, don't learn the hard way. 100%. Learn from, learn other people's lessons. Yeah. So, no, yeah, 100%, man. I resonate with that. And the fact is, you had the power, and you made the decision to, you know, go that way instead mm. of going you know the traditional way of you know just what everyone else did yeah so um took me took me 37 years yeah. bro took me 37 <laughs> years but again truly believe there's a time and a place for everything yeah i just wasn't ready i wasn't ready to to learn mm. to grow mm. to mm. to be better um 37 years because to wake up hey man I, i've i found it like in this in this journey like you know how you're growing up and you know age 21 is like a milestone in life and you know you should have everything figured out by you know 30 and Mm. i found man like through the work or this work and you know helping others and in this journey of self-growth um yeah inner work like man a lot of people don't have it figured out even in their 50s and 60s and they're just making monumental developments in their own sure. knowledge and experiences like then so man i mean as much as you say yeah i'm 37 now but man that's um you're you're lucky eh, to have caught it now mm. you know caught all these realizations now instead yeah. of you know beyond yeah so, um and i think that's what we need to do and that's something that i'm very passionate about also was is what I've learned through the you know through the 37 years that I've been here is that 
pass on what I know and what, what you know and what we know to our youth. Like, yes. part, throw it back early so then they're more educated growing through their teens and through their adult holding that they don't need to wait. They don't need to experience what we experienced, like you were saying before. Mm. If we can educate our brothers and our sisters, our, our, our youth these days, just to be to be better, to be more aware, to be more conscious, to be whatever they they they, they need education in, we need a we need a throwback, man. I feel mm. because then they're they're better moving forward for yeah. themselves. And what a better time for brothers for brothers than now, especially with COVID and mm. a lot of people in isolation and you know mental health issues, you know statistics wise going through the roof. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a there's no better time than now to you know for people to tap in. Yeah, you know, so yeah, COVID was um, it was a testing time for a lot of people mentally. Mm, yeah, you know, obviously with the isolation stuff and that, and I obviously spoke to a lot of our brothers during that time, and there were a lot of struggles, you know, mm. confined spaces and not having anyone to talk to, and just not not doing that great uh, in, in 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 their mental space, and that's why something as simple as a conversation um, can make a difference to someone. Um, but yeah, oh, I really, I really threw a lot of a lot of time and effort into making sure that that you know that I could reach out to as many people as I could through that crazy time. Me personally, I was good because I knew that I was surrounded with the people that 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 filled my mm-hmm. cup, that made me good. Um, and because I was in that state, I knew that I had to sort of help someone in some way through that period. So yeah, testing times for everyone, bro. Yeah. Oh, big one that I wanted to speak about with you brothers leadership um as the the first the first time i met you which was at the amend workshop you know you were in the work and 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 instantly i just i could just feel that you were just a natural leader um one you were just up straight away speaking in front of everybody um and you're just that type of person that i feel is yeah a very good leader I also just wanted to tap into to that and um, your perspective on leadership and how you've become, yeah, uh, you know, a, a well-rounded leader. Sure. Um, I, I was never, growing up, I was never, I was very shy. I was very fucking my bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was very shy, so I never really had the confidence to, to step into that. Yeah. And I guess the confidence come from me playing sport, uh, being fortunate to have, like, captain certain teams and blah 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 and then always used to dread getting up and speaking at the end of the game that was something that I was never really good at and then I guess the confidence in terms of public speaking just sort of come naturally to me Um, I knew that I was okay at it I knew that if I spoke from a a place of love you could never fail Uh, I was always I was always afraid of what people may think Um, but then I think I've, I've, I've I don't think I know. I've always been. I've always been a confident person uh, in myself, and um, and I just naturally, I naturally stepped into that leadership role through sport. Through sport, I was always, you know, always uh, part of the leadership group and whatever team that I was a part of, and that just naturally uh, jumped into to different aspects of life. Um, whether it be our brother's group, I'm very passionate and confident about what I do because I know that it comes from here. Um, if someone was to ask me to get up and, and share something, then I, I'm uh, I'm very confident at doing that stuff. Even if I'm put into a situation where I may not know mm-hmm. anyone, um, but I've I've I've, I've, I've learned to be more confident and, and I have the courage to, to 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 step up and 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 speak because I know that. Everything that I say is authentic and, and genuine and from here. And you never go wrong. You never fail when, when the chat is from, from, the from the heart. And so I'm really comfortable uh, with doing that now. Um, so I guess that's, that's where the confidence in terms of, of, of being able to lead uh, my family. I know my role as a father is, is to lead for, for my kids. Mm. So again, that's something that I, I, I subconsciously do now without even thinking. I just, I know that I need to be that leader. And one thing that I, that I also, I think I, I, I shared with our brothers at the, the, the workshop was there's so much negativity happening, happening around the world and, and we're all doing great things. Um, we can't change the world. Uh, but one thing that a really good friend of mine said to me that has stuck with me is that 
we may not be able to change the world, but what you can do is be a positive influence to the people in your little circle. And then hope for a snowball effect. Mm. And that's one thing that I choose to do. I choose to be a great leader for my family. I choose to be a great leader for our men's group. And hopefully that that, that rubs off on them and then they can yeah. do the same for their family and mm. people around their little circle. And that, that's how I know that I can contribute to just trying to make this place a little better. Um, yeah, man. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, empowered people, empower people. and Yeah. Brothers for brothers, you know. Hopefully, can cre- like you know, will create a ripple effect. Mm. You know, look at the proof is in the pudding. Like you're already yep. growing and growing, and more people are attending your your walks and yep. calls. And you know, it's just yeah. Like I said, there's no better time to have you know sure, these bro. movements than than now. So yep. that's huge, mate. Uh, like uh, thanks for you know your your insight on leadership and yeah, like. And the way that you your perspective is, you only speak from experience, but from the heart. You mm-hmm. know, there's, and you can never go wrong. You're 100 percent when you just speak from the heart. So yeah, and that's something that I had to learn though. You yeah. know, over time, you know, obviously mm. being being a very egotistic person, I always used to think about what I had to say because I wanted to make sure that everyone agreed with what I was saying. Yeah. Um, but as I've sort of stepped into my own skin and realised the kind of person that I am and I understand my calling and what my purpose is here, that's something that I no longer have to worry about Mm. is what other people think because that used to affect me. Yeah. Um, Now I I know and I understand that I can't keep everyone happy, Um, but if I wear my heart on my sleeve and I I speak from here, then everything's going to be okay eventually. Yeah. So I I choose to to only speak from that place. That's awesome. And like... Mm. You know, that's okay that you can't make everyone happy. There are a lot of people out there, me included, that, you know, I used to be that person that always used to make every, try to make everyone happy, but mm. it's just not possible without depleting yourself and, you know. But um, a big thing that I just picked up on there is, like, the removal of masks. You, you feel like, I feel, and I can see you're a very aligned person. Yeah. You, you're aligned with, you know, your heart your your heart set like you know exactly who you are as a person you know that you're only going to make decisions that are going to make you happy yeah um what's some advice for you know people that might be carrying around masks bro this is this is a tough one man this is this is a tough one because for me again only speaking from my experience i was able to 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 let go or to remove the mask once I hit rock bottom Mm. because I had nothing to lose then but then I guess to to people that are still perceiving to to live this happy life but haven't hit rock bottom yet I feel like there's no opportunity for them to get rid of that yeah if that sort of makes sense to me Um, not to, to you sorry me and the wife when we when we both got to a space of love and happiness again I said to her I said I feel like we need to share our story we need to share our testimony and she said what, what's your intention behind it I said if we can help one couple or one marriage or one brother or one sister um, through sharing our story that may be going through the same thing then that's a win just one person yeah. we shared our story we went live we went raw tears emotions everything the amount of responses that we're getting from people that we didn't even know saying, bro, thank you to you and to you and Sky for sharing your story because we perceive to have this happy life, but we're actually going through that now. And I was just like, look at the impact that your story's had on this particular person. Look at the power that it has on this, on the brother here. And it, it was sort of overwhelming, bro, because I didn't realize that it would have that, that impact on people. But having the ability to actually let go and 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 be honest and real um, is a beautiful thing, bro. But uh, to be on to, to be honest, I'm not too sure. Um, it's one of those things that you can only, you can only yeah. It's it's you've got to experience it to feel it, yeah. or to know it. Um, yeah. I hundred percent can resonate with that. It's yeah. um, it's only it takes you to do you know whether it's yeah. It, you will realize if you have a mask, you are, you will realize it eventually. But it's all in your own timing, and yeah. sometimes you have to hit rock bottom in order to 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 
see that you've got a mask on. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's and that's and that's what I'm saying with me. Like mm. I had nowhere else to go. Yeah. You know when I when 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 I was down and out and I was at my worst, but yet still choosing to 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 tell everyone that I was okay. I was like, man, I'm not now, but mm. I'm I'm ready to tell you because I got nowhere else to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm 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 either gonna remove the mask and ask for help, or I'm not gonna be here tomorrow. And yeah. that's where it was for me, you know. I was like, I gotta stop pretending that everything's okay because I'm broken, cause I'm broken. And then I, I just found the courage to start telling people how I was really feeling. But I'm alone. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I miss my family. I miss my kids. What do I do, bro? What do I do? And that's, that's, was the turning point for me to be able to say, yeah. this is who I really am now. I'm not gonna pretend anymore. Yeah. But it's a hard one, bro. I I think. Yeah, it is. Hard. It is. Uh, I think um, it's very subjective. Like only, only, only we can answer that question. I I, I guess uh, in a way, but um, yeah, it, it takes one to realize that they've got the mask on before they can remove it. Because mm. there's a lot of people out there that are walking around unaware that they've got a mask on top yeah, of a mask. Yeah, that's right, bro. I was that person, you know, once yeah. upon a time. Yeah. Um, and now, like yourself just being able to be freed from that mask and mm. being able to to decide walk breathe from the heart yeah it's just um you feel a lot lighter and uh, knowing i mean if you looked at yourself or myself you know a few years back and yeah knowing what you know now you feel like man i was carrying so much on my shoulders yeah now being you your authentic self my so authentic true. self and I, I i i truly believe that the way you are as a person and the way that I am as a person, like our actions speak volumes, bro. You know, people are going to see, man, why is the bro so happy? Why is he genuinely happy? He's always smiling. He's always laughing. Why is Will's always this? You know, he's blah, blah, blah. I want some of that. And then, you know, hopefully that our actions, us again tapping into that leadership role, we lead by our actions. And then we just hope that the bros, all, 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 our, all our ladies as well, see that. And they'll be like, man, I think it's time for me to stop pretending. And start finding true happiness because I want to be happy like him. I want to mm. be happy like Wolves. I want to mm. blah blah blah. So what have they done that have made them this person now? And hopefully our you know our actions can can lead by example. Yeah, but it's only when they when have the really right intention yeah. to come. Not not just oh I'm going to go see Will just because I haven't seen him in ages. Yeah. But when they actually really feel that they need yeah they need to take that mask off or need to lean into vulnerability like that's when. That's when mics would drop for them. Like that's when yeah. the aha moments will come for them. Yeah. I've got to take it back a couple of steps for you, bro. Um, with my mentor, yeah, man. that educated me. Um, I noticed that he was starting to to sort of distance himself from me. Like, you know, <laughs> I'd talk or text and walk on the buzzer all the time because he knew that I was in that vulnerable state. Mm. And then I noticed he wasn't replying and blah blah blah. And then I said to him, I said, bro, I noticed that you're getting distant now. And all he said to me was, bro, I've educated you so much now, you need to walk by yourself. I was like, man, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I no longer need you now. And that's that's where I feel like is happening now with a lot of my men, is that mm. the boys that... And, and you've had the opportunity to meet one of the brothers that has sort of latched on to me. And I felt like it was me throwing to him what I've learned. And same thing, bro, how come you're not texting me <laughs> how come I feel like you're getting distance but I've, I've taught you all I can now yeah it's 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 up to you to walk your own journey now but what I encourage these men to do is to pay it forward like you find someone that you feel like you need to tap into yes. educate them help them and then let them go um I don't know where they come from, bro. They just popped into my head. And I was like, man, I've got to share that. No, that's beautiful. And uh, man, like the the common vibe that I'm, or you know, message that I'm getting there is, you know, for those that may be hurting, like, you know, brothers for brothers, I mean, it's we're not about teaching healing. We're teaching the process so people can go away and heal, you know, themselves, mm. heal, other, help heal others. It's mm. it's the process, you know, yeah. through vulnerability, through taking masks off, through you know, the self love, um, and that's amazing. Just paying yeah. it forward, you know, and and I, I I truly believe again, bro, that 
if you are if you are 100 honest with yourself and you're ready to make a shift you're mm. only you're a product of the people that you're around right you're a product of your environment so if you hang around negative people you're going to turn negative if you hang around positive like-minded men then you're going to turn that way so i feel like the more the more positive people that you're around you're going to start making that shift better or faster yeah. than if you're stuck in bad environments negative negative yeah. vibes and that you know so 100%. that's why stuff like this is amazing like this is still very touchy uh, to me it, you can probably hear it in my voice but I genuinely love this because it's not doing anything for me I want yeah. people to be able to hear our conversation and be like yeah. I want to take that from the bro. I want to take that. I want to take that. And I was starting applying it. And that's why I'm grateful for your platform and other boys that are out there doing... 100%. The more the more we throw out, the better for everyone. Yeah. So good, bro. So good. Yeah, man. Thank you very much, like, yeah, for you to come on this podcast and just throw it, yeah, share your story, man. It's, it's, it's an honor and, and a blessing to be here, like, face-to-face with you. Everyone's going to be yeah. watching this through a, a screen or listening it listening to it on you know while in the car but for me personally to be sitting here in front of you brother like it's an honor and a privilege eh? thank you so much i've got like this invisible treasure chest full of gems that you've just dropped Uh, in there for me that i'm going to take away and um yeah and just cherish man like i'm going to listen to this uh, a lot um bro what's um what's one one lesson that the universal you know just keeps throwing at you bro these days like now that you're now that you've overcome your past <clears throat> you know what's if you mind sharing um yeah what's something that ke- just keeps getting thrown at you one thing that keeps getting thrown at me um um one thing that i'm probably tested with the most and i know that i'm i'm getting better at is just being patient yes just, just yeah. more patience I am a patient person, but I can be better. Um, every day is a, a testing time, you know, whether it's it's at work or whether it's with the kids or or whatever it may be at a at a, at a footy training or whatever, driving. Um, patience always always comes to me. Mm. Uh, I know that I'm good at it. Uh, I'm, I'm working on 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 being better, um, but patience and awareness. Are two are two things that I continuously try to improve on. Um, I'm very self-aware now. Very self-aware. I uh, I understand my surroundings. I understand the people that I'm around. I understand consequences from mistakes that I may make. Um, but I'm very self-aware, and that's something that I never had. I I, I never knew what awareness was. Um, and that's why I'm a big fan of trying to throw awareness to our younger generation. If they have self-awareness early, they're going to be better as they as, as they grow. Um, and also one little nugget that, that pops into my head is whenever you're stuck in a, in a negative situation or your mindset's not, not good, one thing that, that, that I was told a little while ago, and it sticks to, it's, it's stuck with me ever since, is that if you change the way that you look at something, say if you're stuck in a negative situation, if you change the way that you look at things, the things that you will look at will change. Yes. And so, so let that one sizzle for a little while. Let that one marinate for a bit. Let that one marinate <laughs> for a little while. But and and it all comes back to it all comes back to to a positive mindset. It all comes back to a positive mindset. Just because someone is is being negative in your environment, you can be that positive influence that they need to be better. Yeah. Um, so always stay posy. Uh, always stay positive always have self-awareness and patience is big patience is beautiful far out yeah (laughs) i'm I'm still letting that one marinate because that can apply in a lot of situations Mm. everywhere yeah yeah whether it's been frustrated anything yeah yeah i'm gonna think about that one on the way home but no patience um uh, I can resonate with that, man. Yeah. Patience. Um, for those that may be striving for something or the the actual, you know, having that want in your heart, in your mind, it creates like a, almost like a lack. And so therefore, the way you act and the way you show up is with that lack in your heart. So therefore, you're always wanting 
mm. because patience, contentment, um, it's it's something that yeah is not existing when you're yeah continuously looking over there when mm. you're not looking at what's here, what you have. Yeah, and like you'll find hey, like this is so for true. me like in terms of goals and where I want to be and ambitions and that yeah we're all we're where we are um for a reason and you know we are we are where we are supposed to be mm. and that's okay mm. and it's just like i guess it's just um yeah coming back to being okay with with that yeah sure um, but patience I, I can tap into that for for um obviously the mental issues that i was facing uh one thing that that stuck with me also was that if you think about if you think ahead of yourself if you think about the future mm what I've got to do this afternoon, what I've got to do tomorrow, that thought process brings anxiety, if you, if, if, yes. if, if, if you think about it. If yeah. you think forward, that brings anxiety. If you think about what happened in the past, my mistakes, the decisions that I've made, that brings depression to me, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But if you have the ability to keep your thought process in the present, then your head doesn't float. Like you don't think forward, you don't yeah. think back, you just stay here. And that's something that I've that I've that I'm a lot better at now. So I'm here with you now. I'm not thinking about school pickup. I'm not thinking about training this afternoon. I'm not thinking about the class that I've done this morning. I'm just in the present. So I constantly try and just go moment by moment by moment by moment. It helped me. It may not work for others, but that's one thing that that, that got me through my my ugly period mm. when I was really struggling with anxiety and depression was just having the ability to, to not think forward to not think backwards and just to stay in the moment think in the moment and just live moment by moment yeah. by moment and that way I had so much more and what it done for me is that it just brought me clarity I could see a little bit better I wasn't rattled I wasn't angry I wasn't upset I just had so much more clarity so it worked for me it may not work for others but um, just a little nugget I'll throw in there. Nice. What's your uh, vision for Brothers for Brothers in the next five years? Well, we've got some uh, awesome things happening at the moment. There was been there, there. Obviously, I'm very passionate about what we do, um, and there's been like a lot of positive chat and things happening around our little circle. And I just didn't know where to go to next. I was like, I feel like I need to offer more, but I'm not too sure where mm. to go. Um, very fortunate to have connected with a, uh, a an, an awesome company here on the northern beaches called Goodwill Hunting, and they they help support grassroots groups like ours or small charities and that. And so we're looking at uh, doing a collab next year, um, looking at um, uh, doing our own Brothers for Brothers uh, workshops also, um, which 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 I'm very confident about. Um, just gonna throw my faith in the big man's hands and just and just trust the process. I, I know that I'm good at what I do, mm. and that's 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 confidence speaking, not ego speaking. Um, so there's there's 2021 is gonna be good. Um, very excited, very scared, very nervous, but pumped. Uh, excited at the same time because I know that the intention behind what we want to do is gonna help educate and inspire other men, which is which is what we're all about. Yeah. So. Um, Happy to see 2020 up. Uh, very excited for next year and, and then what lies ahead for, for Brothers for Brothers. Amazing, man. Yeah, oh, oh, look, like, yeah, again, all the Brothers for Brothers uh, links will be in the description. So, um, oh, I guess, did you want to say the Instagram name? Like, where can we find you guys? Yeah, so the, uh, obviously, just running off Instagram and, um, and Facebook. So, on our Facebook, it's just Brothers for Brothers. Um, and our Instagram page is uh, Brothers for Brothers, but B R O dot um, yeah. T H E R S for Brothers. So um, yeah, we're only running off those those two platforms at the moment. I'm trying to get better, I'm trying to learn as I go. Um, but yeah, at the final, no my hari my kiteropu or Brothers for Brothers, uh, we welcome all of our brothers out there uh, with love and open arms, um, and just really genuinely love love the journey that I, I find myself on. Um, like I was saying before, through that separation period that me and my wife had, through me hitting rock bottom, I was able to find my calling, um, which I'm grateful for now. And 
I'll continue to do as much as I can to to help others in some way. Yeah. Mm. And I've said this before. You got to sometimes you got to break down to break through, and um, we don't want that. We don't want that for everyone, and we hope that they can learn from our lessons. And you know, but I, I most definitely want to just acknowledge you, man, for coming onto this podcast and yeah, sharing your sharing from your heart. Um, man, it's 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 not an easy thing. Like, and hundred mm. percent, you know. <laughs> I can honestly, yeah, say this. Yeah, it's definitely not an easy thing. So, um, no, thanks for coming on to the podcast, brother. Um, unless there was something else that you wanted to speak into, um, the uh, floor is yours, brother. Yeah, I, I guess just, um, I guess just a couple of things. Thank you, bro. Uh, me, uh, ahoki a koe, sending love to you. Thank you again for the uh, the awesome opportunity that you gave me to share. Uh, I, I, I truly believe the story. That I uh, that I have to share has mm-hmm. a lot of meaning and a lot of power behind it, with the intention just to help someone in some way. So thank you for the opportunity to uh, to, to to be here, um, and 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 I guess uh, just to our to our brothers out there, to our men. I know that um, I know that every, every face has a story, and some have the courage to share and some don't. Uh, just just know that it's okay to 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 call it or to speak about uh, whatever uh, you may be going through. Um, find someone that you feel comfortable with sharing. Um, uh, the worst thing for you to do is to is is to hold whatever you're you're, you're going through to yourself. Uh, and again, I'm only speaking from my experience. And once I did have that ability or that courage to finally open up and share, I it, it, it was it was the first step in the right direction for my own healing. Um, and I know other brothers will hear other other people say the same thing, but I I truly truly believe uh, brothers out there just just start talking. Uh, it is a it is the first step in the right direction for your healing. So, uh, if 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 you want to call it all with me, if you want to talk to me, you know my heart and mind, please reach out. Uh, don't be fucking mad. Don't be shy. Or find someone that you feel comfortable with. Um, that's all, really, bro. Mm. That's and, all. and for those that may be on the other side of it and may feel called to reach out to someone, yeah, even just a simple, hey, how are you going? You know, how are you? Like, really, how are you? Sometimes that can do wonders for someone that you know you might feel that has it all together but mm. an actual fact needs needs to talk so on the yeah. other side yes reach out to if you if you need help but for those that feel that you know they have power or you know the opportunity to reach out to someone to ask them if they need help mm. man i would um 100 percent implore you to do that so because the thing with that bro is as much as as much as and again, for an example, with our brothers that I'm mentoring, mm. as much as they think I'm helping them, they're helping me, bro. So it's like a win-win mm. situation. Now, I help you grow from what I've learned. You help me grow also. Um, and there's no failure there. You know, we all win. So that's me, bro. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate you. Um, we'll see you on the podcast in the near future, eh? Chat. <laughs> no, awesome, bro. Thanks, bro. Love it. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode of the podcast. If you listen up to this far, really, really appreciate you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, jump on the on the Instagram page, support, always appreciated. But I really enjoyed speaking with Willie about, you know, the challenges that he's had to overcome, the lessons learned, you know, and the beautiful the fact that, you know, Brothers for Brothers was born from his life experience. Um, and now he is actually out there doing the work to help others and it's just so inspiring but um yeah really appreciate you listening to this episode and uh yeah we'll see you in the next one peace